Scenes again in San Francisco. The US PGA gets underway tomorrow. To preview it, we have someone very well quali qualified to say the least. Three time major winner, 2008 US PGA winner, Ryder Cup captain, Padraig Harrington, is with us. Thanks for the time, Padraig. Great to have you with us. Yeah, it's good to be here. You could have been there, obviously. You made the decision not to travel. Yes, it's a. Uh, yeah, look, as I said, I, I'm minding my own business here and, and staying safe, and why would I? exponentially increase that risk by going out there and being out of control in some way. So, yeah, it's it's just one of those things. It's At my stage in my career, my age, it's you tend to be a bit more prudent, a bit more cautious. You've played Harding Park before, I presume, down the years. I have, yeah. It's, it's, you know, it's a good, solid golf course. There's, there's, there's really, it's not a tricky course. There's, there's, there's really all there in front of you. I wouldn't say... It's the most intimidating golf course. It's it's a it's a nice course to play. It's a course you'd enjoy playing, but certainly doesn't. Have, bar the 18 tee shot, it doesn't have a lot of holes that would just keep you awake at night wondering how am I going to get through this hole? How am I, you know, I, I could blow up on this hole and, and end my tournament at any stage. It really doesn't have that. It's just a solid golf course. Okay. Brooks Kepke described it as a big boy golf course. He said you got to hit it straight. You have to put it in the fairway. It's going to be quite long. Thick rough, I think it plays into my hands. That made me worry it was like Beth Page, black esque, and what we saw last year. Very similar. Very, very similar. There's, you know, yes, you do want to hit it long. You do want to hit it straight. It's a big course. It's a colder temperature. You know, it's going to be tough. And I believe the greens are firm. So that means you, you want to be hitting reasonably short irons into these greens. You're not going to get away. Even the, the short straight hitters are not going to have any joy hitting five irons into these green four irons, you know. You've got to be a longer hitter. But the beauty for the long hitters, is, you know, if they miss a fairway, they're just in rough and in trees. It's, it's not like, you know, there's no big penalty. They won't, they, they, obviously they want to hit the fairway, but there's no intimidation factor. Uh, except for that eighteen t there's no real intimidation factor at all on the golf course off the tee. So if you're, I don't know, a Zach Johnson-esque type and maybe on a, in cold thick marine fog around San Francisco, you're getting out there maybe even 270, 280, and you've 200 plus into a couple of par fours, and especially if you're in the rough, are you, like are half the field almost ruled out of this tournament in, in a way? Uh, uh, well, half the field are definitely ruled out. Let's say uh, of the good players and the different styles, uh, yeah, I think there's a lot of good players that are just not, it's not going to be their week to compete. Uh, you know, as I say, I don't know if, if the fairways got very firm, maybe the shorter hitters would end up being long enough to hit short irons into the into those greens. Yeah. But really, is you, you know, the greens are definitely going to be firm. They're going to be fast, and you just you, you know you just don't want to be approaching them with those long irons. And plus, those short to medium hitters, you know, when they hit it in the rough. They're 30 yards behind the long hitters in the rough. So if you're trying to hit a five iron out of the rough from 200 yards, you're not getting there. Yeah. Whereas a longer hitter's got 170, 160. You know, he's hacking at it with an eight iron or a nine iron. He, he, you know, he, he can get there. So it's, it's a double advantage, as I said, for the, for the longer hitters on a, on a golf course that isn't that penal for a wide. Okay. So, you know, somebody like Phil Mickelson would enjoy this week. Uh, you know, just, you know, the missus. Okay, usually you, you get misses at majors. The crowd trample them down, so that's not going to happen. Yeah. But the, but his misses, if you hit it into the tree line, the rough isn't heavy on the trees because obviously it doesn't get the same growth under the tree line. So you know, I, I think the the bigger hitters and, and the likes of a deal with that, they'll be enjoying this. You know, there won't be a fear factor off the tee. Uh, so I do see this one. I, I know it's cliche at the moment playing into the longer hitters. Uh, I think some of the good. Medium length hitters, you know the likes of a of a Morikawa or Hovland, who you'd like to see coming through. I don't think it's particularly going to be suited to them. If I was going to pick a a kind of medium length hitter, I would more go for Webb Simpson just because he is just a tenacious player. Mm. You know, if I if I was going and outside of that, you're really just starting to pick the bunch of the guys at the top, the the really good drivers, the longer hitters. Are you sorry to see the game go in that direction? It is going that direction, so you know. And I've seen this for, I've seen it for twenty years, and uh, I'm surprised that it's taken this long. That you know, nobody, nobody noticed when when Tiger came out. He had a every nearly always the best player has a driving advantage. Tiger had a 
huge advantage distance off the tee. So much so he, he ended up playing with a much softer golf ball than everybody else because he had that advantage and he didn't need it. Uh, but when Rory came along in 2010, he definitely made it more acceptable for people to be long hitters. Up to 2010, long hitters were always a curiosity. You know, you had your Bubba and your J.B. Holmes and guys like that who weren't performing because there was a stigmatism to it. Mm. it, it yeah, yeah. It, 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 I got that word wrong, did. No, no, you're spot on. Yeah, yeah, okay. So, you know, people, if you were a long hitter and you missed a fairway, it was because you were a long hitter. Mm. Whereas once Rory came along, it made it acceptable. And then Bubba and J.B. Holmes started playing well and DJ started playing well. And all of a sudden, you had 10 guys playing well who were long hitters. And now you have probably 20, 30 players. Now, uh, uh, Bryson DeChambeau, he's taken another little leap. And it would be interesting to see how many more will play at his length, which is, is another step above the, those lads. But for the last 10 years, it's gone from having one player who was long and what's the chance of one guy winning a tournament very slim mm. to having now probably 30 guys who are who are equally as long as Rory, maybe not as good a driver, but equally as long. And you're basically picking one of those 30 to win each week. Yeah. And it was, if there was only one, it wouldn't matter. And, and as I said, it... You can go back to history. Every time there was a long hitter, everybody else put so much pressure on that person that he ended up trying to play like a short hitter because mm. commentators, other players would all bully him into, no, you can't play golf that way. To talk about some of the big names then, I'll get on to Rory and Woods in a moment, but it is just worth pausing on Kepka. He is the defending champion. He is looking to win this tournament for the, for the third time in a row. He had no form to speak of for much of this year and then hooked up with Pete Cowan and did some work with him and Claude Harmon and came out and finished second at the WGC last week. And just, you know, the, the, the switch was flicked and we, we know his major pedigree. And I suspect you kind of like his psychology here. So he sees majors as the easiest to win. He says the way the golf course sets up, that eliminates pretty much half the guys. From there, the remaining half, they probably won't, half of them won't play very well. Then from there, I feel like mentally I can beat them. So you've probably got about 10 guys. That's the way I see it. So if I do what I'm supposed to do, then yeah, I should win. He looks at majors as a good chunk of the field shooting themselves in the foot. Oh, 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 he's 100% right in that. There's no doubt. There's a, when it comes to the majors, there's good players who have got good games who's just not going to win a major. Uh, there's too much stress, too much pressure. And then because of the type of golf course, you know, it's a big golf course. And it's not just about hitting it long off the tee. It's having speed to, to get the spin on the ball, having the speed to get through the rough if you are in the rough. And and just the way they set them up as tight as they do with pin positions. You know, you have somebody who's, who's got 170 into a par four. These long hitters are hitting, could even be nine iron. Maybe it's cold there, eight iron. And you have a, a medium length hitter who's 30 yards back behind that. He's going in with five iron from 200 yards. And that's, you just can't compete with that. Mm. Like it has to be a superb week. And and the, as I said, there's plenty. There's a good few players who are longer than Brooks, who are good players. And you're really looking at that bunch of guys to see who comes through. Brooks made a remarkable turnaround in form last week. But I will say, from watching it on the TV, he hasn't. You know, he's not been comfortable with his driving all year, and he wasn't last week. The injury is still whether it's the injury. It's still in his head with 16, with three holes to play last week. He's right there, you know, right where he needed to hit a few good shots. Out of bounds up the left to 16, he hit it way right. Out of bounds up the left to 17, he hit it way right. Mm. He is not comfortable. His go-to shot has always been just hammering it down the left. And he's not comfortable with that at the moment. If there's trouble down the left, 18 last week, he took the three wood and hit it straight down the left into the hazard. So he's not there with his driving, but there's no penalty in Harding Park. Okay. You know, yeah, up, yeah. It's, 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 there's none of those. We won't, I'm not saying to you, bar the AZ, I'm not saying there's any way you're standing there going, well, if I hit this left, you know, my week's over. That's yes. not the case in Harding Park. Okay, very interesting. If any player had their form railroaded by the pandemic, it was McElroy. He'd had f uh, seven consecutive top fives. I mean, it, it, it looked like the Masters was made for him. And... He has struggled to reignite since golf has resumed. He's, he's, not just, he's not shown any form. What are you seeing in his game? Well, I, I'm, I'm, the only positive I'm seeing is he's under the radar. And that, that could be, you know, we've seen him go into majors in the last number of years on top form, under a lot of pressure, a lot of stress. 
he's somewhat under the right radar. That everybody's talking about everybody else. He's in. A, he has a point to prove. He, you know, he's dropped down to three in the world. He's just. I mean, Rory's always been at his best when he wants to prove something. When he wants to come back, you know, after a little slump and people getting his back and give out about this, that, he then comes out stronger than ever. So, I, I, I we clearly hasn't seen any form on the golf course, but mm. we're definitely, you know. He could be at his most dangerous, nice, calm, relaxed going into it. And, and this is where somebody like, I would have said JT, Justin Thomas would have been one of the, well, he still is one of the favourites, but I would have been saying he was a real top class. But winning last week, there's a lot of stress in winning. Mm. You know, and, and that just, I wonder, I'm not saying it, re, it re, definitely reduces his chances and definitely reduces the, you know, if you were going to back him, the value in backing him based on the fact he's just, Coming off a win, he's going to be a little bit tired. And very few players, you know, come back up the second week just because of the stress levels. It, it takes a lot to, to, you know, to win any tournament, let alone two in a row. McElroy was talking to you and Murray in the Guardian, and he was saying the thing he he needs to do or wants to do in a major is get off to a fast start. And if we take the last fifteen majors, so basically in excess of three years. Uh, McElroy's average first round has been 72.9, so we'll, we'll call that a 73 is his first round. And then the other three rounds, two, three and four, he's averaging 69. So he's three shots better per round away from that first day in a major. Like last year at the USPJ, he's 57th after two rounds, he finishes eighth. I suspect he's tried everything. I suspect he's gone out and been conservative and not tried to force it. I suspect he's gone out and been aggressive and said, I need to go for this and play a freewheeling game. There, there is some kind of blockage there amongst other things. Uh, look, I, I think any of the leading players, when they're on that run of top form, where they're clearly ahead of the pack, when they go on the golf course, all their, and this is kind of alluding to what Brooks was saying, they just play their game, and they know that if they play their game, they're going to win. Now, Rory is somewhat, and that's what's happening in the first one, somewhat looking over his shoulder and kind of wondering, well, what does everybody else do? What are the other top players doing? And and that that's why... First day, it's a very cautious. You know, it's not. He's not freeing up because he's somewhat worried. What he is, what if Jordan Speed gets off to a run here? He's good enough to lead from the front and win the tournament. Or JT this week, what if he does it? You know, it, 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 the best players when they're on that run certainly are only concerned about themselves and 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 wouldn't see. They know that come Sunday afternoon with nine holes to play, that they're going to be very close to in the lead, around the lead, and can win it with those nine holes. And they're patient, waiting for it. You could, I've seen that in loads of little runs of different players when they just get on, on that hot form. They just, they're so comfortable that they know a mistake on Thursday is not going to cost them the tournament. That they're, It's inevitable. Mm. They feel like it's inevitable that they'll be in contention on Sunday. And, I, I, you know, like that's a good example, Rory, saying that, well, I feel like I need a fast start. Well, no, he just he's going to be in contention after seventy two, you know, after sixty three holes if he plays his own game. Mm. Uh, he doesn't need a fast start. He doesn't need a slow start. He just needs to to stay in the game for sixty three holes. And I think Brooks is, you know, from what you're saying there, Brooks is saying that he knows that look, these guys are going to burn out. These guys can't compete with me on this style of golf course under this pressure. Come sixty three holes into this tournament, I'm going to be leading a couple of shots behind the lead. And I'm going to have a chance of winning. So that means that on the first day, you know, if he if he's got an eight footer on the twelfth hole the first day, he's not thinking, well, if I miss this, I'm not going to win. He's just this is just part of the first sixty three holes to get me in position. And, mm. and, and you know, that's not a logical toss out thing. It's just how they feel deep down that no matter what happens here, I'm going to have a chance this week. I want to play you a clip. Hank Haney does a podcast. He's Woods' his former coach, as you know. And uh, the, the general sense of Wo on Woods is it's cold, uh, the rough is thick. It's, you know, his back obviously played up on the Friday at Memorial, and that's the high wire act that, that he seems to have to try and balance with his body. But Hank Haney was talking to his podcast, as you'll hear, and he's been seeing some footage of Woods. And, and he, he kind of stopped me in my tracks here because he predicted Woods would win the Masters last year. Have a listen. Uh, we don't know what we're going to get out of Tiger. Although Tiger looked awful good, did you have you seen some of the videos of him? You know what? I have not seen the videos, Hank. Oh man, Steve, his swing looks great. Really? I mean, yeah. I don't know what he's working on. Of course, you know who knows what he's working on. But I would just say this: his swing looks. I mean, when I looked at the swing, 
I just saw one swing on Twitter, and I thought that is exactly like I would try to get him to swing. Really? Oh, yeah. Wow. I mean, he, he'll not, he would never admit that he ever thought about anything I ever said, but uh, I, I can tell you, I mean, that swing to me looks, it looks right on. Now, that was one swing. He could get off, but but that was one swing, but it looked right on. I mean, right on. I mean, I would say as good as I've seen him in a long, long time. So, what's the word on Tiger then? It, 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 nobody like well, sure somebody knows, but I certainly don't. It's a bit of a <laughs> it's a bit of a mystery yeah. how he's going to turn up physically. Uh, you know, just you know, sometimes he goes. You, we see him at tournaments sometimes, and like he is struggling. You know, it, it, physically, you know, back wise, and just moving slowly. And then other times he turns and he, he's there, and he and he wants to be there. I. He's not long anymore, Tiger. You know, he's not, he's medium length. He's not, doesn't have that speed that he used to have. Maybe he can produce at the odd time, but as I said, with a bad back, does he want to be lunging in the rough and gouting balls out? Mm. You know, I just, I, I, I prefer, if you, it, it, you'd never rule Tiger out. How could you? Yeah. And, if he, and if he gets in contention, Tiger gets better. You know, that's the beauty. He knows how to win. And if he could get himself into the, into the real hunt on Sunday, players would still back off Tiger as we saw with his master when everybody ran away from him uh, so he still has that presence but you know I'd be picking a different golf course you know I'd be yeah. picking a, a much more strategic course you know in the end of the day this golf course is just take drive out boom it down there and let's get on from there it's, it's not going to be you know just there's, there's, there's not a lot of cleverness to the course it's just a big strong golf course yes the craft that he can he can win a major with yeah. which brings us on to Bryson <laughs> so uh, that, I mean, that suits him down to the ground. Uh, we had you on the podcast, the Golf Weekly podcast, a couple of weeks back, and you, we don't have time for it now, but you, if people want to look back, you gave an amazingly brilliant explanation of, of his speed and, and when he f was first experimenting with his speed and how he's got to where he's got to. Uh, you also, in the midst of it, said you didn't love his golf course etiquette. Uh, since then, we've seen some more examples of that, even looking for a relief from the ants. Um. <laughs> you know, I've I, I got to say... Yeah, I, I, it was other stuff. Look, in the end of the day, the ruling and things like that, he asked the referee, brought a referee in. Yeah. You know, clearly he had a bad lie, but it's fair enough. The referee will say yes or no. I, I, you know, he didn't know the ruling the week before with the out bounds and things like that. That was that was bad form. Looking for the drop for red ants, it's a very complicated one because you do get a drop from red ants because they're dangerous. Okay. But ants, and you get a drop from burrowing animals, but ants are considered burrowing animals. So he, again, didn't quite know the ruling. But he still brought the referee in. You know, he, he, you know, he didn't get in there and try and move sticks and, you know, when nobody on the ball moved. He, you know, I, I'm not going to I'm not gonna hang him up on that one at all. And what about, I, what about his attitude? There is a kind of faux politeness, passive-aggressive uh, attitude I, with all these officials. Yeah, I thought it was very cute shot that, you know, where Phil Mixon got a drop, you know. The rules are the rules, and, and they're there. They, you, I'm a person who lives and dies by the rules. So, you know, unfortunately, I, I'm that type of person. I, I, I know them so much that I can penalise myself sometimes by knowing them, but they're advantage at other times. But if you're going down that ro road of, you know, looking for rulings and asking the questions, you know, you've got to know, you've got to know where you stand, and and, and you you certainly wouldn't, you wouldn't question a referee unless. You know, unless you really do know the yeah. ruling, and I, 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 I've had to, I think I've had to call a second. I actually don't think I've ever called a second referee. Okay. Uh, but you know, I, I've asked for rulings that are, are fifty-fifty, and, and you know, to, absolutely to my advantage, I've got drops. But as I said, because I know a few rules, there's a few times I have to do things that I know other players don't do because they don't know the intricacy of the rule, and I'm going well. You know, it's tough on me, but if you're going to live by it, you, you sometimes die by it. Mm. So he's kind of playing his first major here with his new game, with his new length. And Jack Nicholas, when he was, you know, at that time, Brooks, I think, had a 10 on the par, or Bryson had a 10 on the par 5. He kept, you know, he was trying to hook a ball 200 plus yards yeah. out of thick rough. And Nicholas had a very insightful comment, I suspect, where he said he's going to have to learn what he can and can't do with his new frame and his new speed. Uh, we're, we're going to see it now. We're going to see what he's will be punished for at a major off the tee. Will he be wild and find himself in dreadful spots? Based on what you're saying, Harding Park sounds like about as good a, a first major for him to play with this new kind of strategy. 
I, look, I, yeah, I, I thought Jack really was entitled when he said that, and it's true. Just because he can hit it so long doesn't mean he has to use it all the time on every shot. And, and there's a pressure nearly to, to live up to it. And, 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 and watching on TV, it does seem a little bit like that. That like He feels like every drive has to be hit 100% and hit driver in every hole. But, like If you have that length, you should use it when you need to use it. And there's certain holes you just... There's no, nothing to be gained on. But it's a great advantage to have, and he has it in the rough. I, certainly, he hasn't finished in the top 15 of a major, and that's a big issue. But I would be watching Bryson DeChambeau this week. He is, if nothing, you know, he's box office in terms of what he's <laughs> doing on the golf course, what he's yeah. saying on the golf course. Uh, you know, and, and I'm curious to see. Is, like, he, uh, What's fascinating is how straight... He, like, he is absolutely physically maxed out on the golf course and hitting it straight. Whereas you will see in 10, 15 years, time, you have plenty of guys who are hitting at the same distance as Bryson is hitting it now, but they're not maxed out, as yeah. in they're doing it within themselves. They're, like Cameron Champ is out there now. He, he's obviously not at the level that Bryson is at, but he can hit it as far further with ease, and you will have more like, but Bryson, like, to throw, like I can throw myself at a golf ball and gain 25 yards, but like I could gain forty yards in the wrong direction as well, mm. I, and Bryson is hitting it straight. I, I, don't, I don't know if that's a honeymoon period, but it's it's very impressive. And if he does get it on form, he has the he certainly has the belief that he could. He, of, of all the players in the field, there is a chance that he could go to the front and keep going. And that this is kind of the opposite of what Brooks is saying. There's very few players who can front run in a major tournament and keep going. Uh, I, I, you know, yeah. would there be a handful of players? That, but Bryson, actually, I think I think Thursday morning or Thursday afternoon, like we talked about Rory earlier, one of the names that Rory will look for on the leaderboard is he's been a bit wondering how's how's Brooks done, how's JT done, and he will look to see Bryson's name. That takes a you know, he, other players are, are are wondering, you know, are curious because they're afraid of Bryson's A game, and that that's that's the key here. Mm. Bryson has an A game that is is, is is capable of beating everybody else's A game. Yes. Which, you know, puts pressure on guys. It does. Uh, that's an interesting point about the honeymoon period as well. I wonder will there be scar tissue in five years' time. So look, about 30 seconds here, because we like, I haven't mentioned John Ram. we barely touched on Justin Thomas, the world's number one and two, and there's, there's so many names. Peter Laurie was on this morning, he's got a hankering for uh, Matt Fitzpatrick. Do you, no, want, do, you, do you want to give us a final I, I word give, on who's going to win my, this? I'll give you my final word. Go on. JT just played last week. I like him because that I think John Ram is going to come back strong. The ideal golf course, straight here, powerful, absolutely ideal for him. At the top, I'd be putting John Ram in there. I do think Matt Fitzpatrick was, was the, the outsider, but now everybody knows about him. I think in the international stage, maybe he won't get it at home. I think Shane is coming in with beautiful form, very comfortable with his game after last week. Such a boost. Played nicely. Shane could do very nicely as well. OK, well, we would take that. Enjoy it over the weekend. Thanks, Emil. I will indeed. You too. Cheers. That's Padraig Carrington there, Ryder Cup captain and former US PGA winner, of course, back in 08. And the Golf Weekly podcast, if you're looking for it, is up, available. We did it a day early to preview uh, Peter Lowry was with us. Uh, Golf Weekly brought to you in association with Now TV and you can stream this week's PGA Championship with a Now TV Sky Sports pass. So that was Patrick Carrington. We have Leo Cullen on the way. Off the ball on News Talk. At Volkswagen Financial Services, our solutions are expertly engineered to put you in the driving seat. Choose the flexibility of PCP, low-cost HP finance or the convenience of leasing. Add extras like servicing and maintenance plans. For Volkswagen, Audi, Skoda, Seat or Volkswagen commercial vehicles, discover financing options that match your needs and your budget. Talk to your local dealer or visit vwfs.ie slash affordability. Volkswagen Financial Services. Affordability engineered for you. Finance provided by Volkswagen Financial Services Ireland. Subject to lending criteria, terms and conditions apply. Together with every electric vehicle owner, ESB is powering Ireland towards a cleaner, brighter future. By continuing to invest in and upgrade the ESB public charging network, we want to ensure we're ready to support more electric vehicles on our roads. As part of this essential process, we will be introducing pricing from August 10th for the use of public standard chargers, which can be found in towns and cities across Ireland. 
For more information, visit esb.ie forward slash ecars. With face masks becoming